Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we shall be continuing with our chapter 2 and uh, offset C and shall be looking forward to the remaining questions of this chapter and uh, as usual, trying to understand the tips and trick of tackling to the right answer of any of these questions. So the next question we have is question number 12 and we shall be talking about the retrospective here. It says which of the following is least likely to occur as a result of a retrospective? Two important things to remember from here. Number one, that we are talking about retrospective. Number two, we are talking about least likely. So the word like best, most, least are all very important to come to the conclusion because if you don't pay attention to this, you may have conflicting answers. And whenever you have conflicting answers, do go back and try and check if they are asking you best, most, least, not, etc. as a keyword in the question. Because it's very easy during the examination to ignore them and forget them that they asked you something else. So least likely something which has no relevancy to the word retrospective. So let's get started and check out the option A here. Option A says uh, the, the quality of future test object improves by identifying improvement in development practices. Indeed, why not? When we talk about retrospective, this uh, one of the activity is of course to gather lessons learned together and it may help us to improve our development activities or overall development process because the contribution is not limited to testing or not limited to any one particular part of our activities it talks about the entire process which we are conducting together as a team so yes we gather together to find out the gaps inaccuracies in the process to improve it and make it more better so let's move on to option B. Option B says uh, the test efficiency improves by speeding up the configuration of test environment through automation. Yes, as a part of retrospective, we can talk about action items and uh, action items are those which probably can help us to improve and do better. So we may talk about automation of configuration management in one of our retrospective, which could help us to do it. See, it's again not necessary that you may have this information right from the beginning. But sometime it is a part of retrospective, you realize that doing it automatically would save a lot of time. So yes, this could be identified as a part of retrospective for sure. Let's go to C. C says end users understanding of the development and test process is improved. End users understanding on the development and test process. Who are we to teach them that what is our development and test process? Indeed, uh, if we talk about understanding the needs of the user, that's done through user story or acceptance criteria. But helping user, uh, end user or a user understand our development and testing process, I don't think that we do at any point of time during the entire project lifecycle, right? So that's not something which is relevant to retrospective and retrospective is not meant for that. Like we teach end user that, what we do and how we do and how we are improving. Uh, maybe the business, but not the end user, right? Let's go to option D. Option D says that automated <clears throat> test scripts are enhanced through feedback from the developers. Yes, during the retrospective, developers can come up with their feedback saying that how exactly your automation scripts can be improvised because they may make changes to their code and the code changes may invite object uh, properties, attributes of date thus may invite you to update your automated scripts. So I think uh, pretty much the you know three options are talking about retrospective and one of them is not. And that's what goes to the right answer. So put together the right answer for this particular question is C, that is end users understanding of development and test process is improved, is least likely to be an objective of retrospective. So. I think with having very clear context, sometimes this is how we can make our job very much simpler to the right result. Let's move on to the next. The next question we have is question number 13. And question number 13 is talking about which of the following test level is most likely being performed if the testing is focused on validation and is not being performed by the testers. See, again, a very simple and easy context to recall from here that validation is where we perform dynamic testing. 
and uh, testers do perform them. Like we talk about four of them, which we have covered in our syllabus, that is component testing, another way, uh, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, acceptance testing. But if you remember a little bit deep dive here, you can understand that the component integration system is done by the internal testers, whereas the acceptance testing is done by the business. And that is what exactly is being asked to you in this particular question. They just clearly asked you that which of the following is focused on validation, but is not being performed by the testers. So even if you don't read the options, you can still conclude that uh, what exactly could be the right answer because I gave you the right answer. So let's quickly check up the options here. Option A says component testing, B says component integration testing, C says system integration testing, and D says acceptance testing. So without wasting much of our time, the right answer to this particular question is D, that is acceptance testing, because that's the only level which is talking about validation and that's all about dynamic testing and uh, not performed by the testers because it is performed by the business okay or the customer representative so that's how you can easily quickly solve some of the basic things and that would make a lot of sense at any point of time right so let's move on to the next question and if you're listening to any of the crackling noise background this is Diwali week in India and you would hear, but I cannot just skip some of my videos. So I had to make a video today as well, but this is something which I cannot ignore, right? Let's move on. So the next question we have is question number 14 and the question number 14 is saying the navigation system software has been updated due to it, uh, due to it suggesting routes that break traffic laws, such as driving the wrong way down one way streets, which of the following best describes the testing that will be performed? Again, I think uh, a simple and basic outline of such things is to understand the situation uh, because uh, there are levels which we have discussed about. We have understood there are a lot of things which are covered as an objective of different level because this question is related to test levels and we need to understand what kind of testing is performed at which level of dynamic testing, right? So if I look at the options quickly, we have option as Confirmation testing, confirmation testing, then regression testing, only regression testing, regression testing, then confirmation testing. Now they made your job easier. Instead of asking about the test levels to be conducted, they just twisted the entire scenario with respect to defect and the side effect, right? Because people have reported that uh, the map is rerouting to the wrong uh, directions or probably something which is violating the traffic rules and uh, taking you on a wrong way or getting into one way, so which is not recommended. So I think the simple process is there's a defect being reported. The very first thing you would do is uh, fix the issue, conduct confirmation testing, and you would parallelly check for any kind of side effects. So that's the simple process. It's not that only fixing the defect would do the job. You need to do regression just to check for this uh, change of the code to fix the defect has not introduced any side effects. And uh, it's not directly regression. You have to fix the defect for sure. And this not other way around. So if you look at the options, that's what I was talking about. If you see option A, only confirmation testing. No, post confirmation, we will have to do regression. B is uh, what we are looking for. C, only regression. No, there's a defect which you have to fix. And to confirm the fix, you have to run confirmation testing. And D, regression testing, then confirmation testing. That's not something what we do, right? So put together the right answer for this particular question is B, confirmation testing, then regression testing is the generic process whenever you identify any kind of defect and post resolution, you perform confirmation and followed by that a round of regression to complete the process. So I think that makes it very simple and easy that uh, sometimes they may not ask you the definition of uh, these keywords. Sometimes they may just give you a very indirect statement and ask you, what are we interested in? So be open-minded in terms of understanding the situation to come to the conclusion. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.